Hey everyone out there, VCers, YouTubers, thanks for dropping into my channel. Welcome. Uh, today I'm going to go over a uh, a quick video of some records that I've had and owned for 50 years. I would say probably eight or nine of these I purchased the year it came out. Some of them are a little earlier, and I may have bought them a few years past the uh, the date of the record release. But I'm going to go over them for you. There's 11 here, the um, 10 plus a bonus. And I try to uh, do a cross-reference of stock records that I have. I would think, uh, given my, you know, my age and my, uh, you know, my uh, passion for music, uh, some of these things go back, you know, 60, some of my records are 60 years old. I didn't buy them 60 years ago. But they're 60s, and some of them are even earlier than that. But these are ones I've owned for 50 years or so, uh, 50 years plus. So I'm just going to show you them. I'll try to show you the label. Um, and a lot of these I have multiple copies of. Some of you may, you may have seen these records that I've done on other uh, segments for other reasons. Best sounding, most uh, played, my favorites. Uh, I'm not going to do a, a thing that records that changed my life because i think all music uh changes you in some way you know there's a lot of videos going around now music 10 records that changed my life i couldn't i couldn't do that um uh, i i would say there's probably songs on the radio that i heard that changed uh the way i thought about music and i went out and bought the album or I saw the band live and bought the album so uh but these are just some 10 records that i've uh, 10 records plus one that I've owned for 50 years. Uh, here's a great one. Doesn't get a lot of love right now. I don't see it uh, mentioned too often. Uh, don't shoot me. I'm only the piano player. You know, the great Sir Elton John. And this is an MCA pressing. Most of these are domestic, I believe. I don't think they're imports, so they're domestic for U.S. And there's the actual black MCA label 72 and this is a nice gatefold i couldn't tell you where i bought this uh specifically some of them i i do know where i bought these but i'm probably thinking a local record store in my town uh where, where i grew up or a record store in a department a record store uh inside a department store that was you know, common back when I was buying records. Here's a great one. I could tell you where I got this. This is Bad Finger Straight Up. There's the Apple. This still has shrink. And I bought this at Volvo's Records in Elizabeth. And I actually worked at Volvo's Records. So this is a great one. I know there's a box set uh, being released on... Uh, 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 Apple compilation. I think the uh, four bad, bad finger records are going to be in that. So that's pretty cool. Here's one I probably bought um, new, but I probably got it after it, ha it had been released because this, I believe, was released in 67 or 68. And that's this one. That's a an original 2i. Uh, the great Santana first LP and you can see this still has the hype sticker this was probably at a department store that I picked this up but I've had this in my collection for 50 years great record this one sounds great here's one of my favorites I uh, picked this up new probably at the same record store I mentioned uh, bread baby I'm a want you this has a uh, actually uh, like a Photograph, paste it onto the cardboard. It's a, um, it has a shiny texture to it. And this is a great sounding record. If you don't have any bread, get this record, but make sure you get the one that's their first pressing with this um, paste on, pasted on photograph. Um, nice gay fold. But this record, as a specifically uh, "Baby I'ma Want You," it just—it's just an amazing pressing. 
amazing sounding record. It's articulate, has great dynamics. Acoustically, it's just uh, it's up there with uh, this boy that I showed the other day on a Beatle, on Beatle Love Songs. It's up there with that as far as uh, a realism to the recording. And uh, make sure you get this actual actual pressing if you can do it. And there's no guarantee the pressing inside this, but this is a good way to start. But what's uh, but how and why I say that is I have this record on its uh, "Baby I'm a Want You" on the greatest hits, and it doesn't come close to sounding as good as what's on uh, this pressing of "Baby I'm a Want You." Uh, bread album and of course this one i had to throw in have had this for 50 years 1972 got it new uh this turned me on to talking about a record that may have changed you well this record uh changed me to know about pink floyd prior to that i wasn't really a uh, a pink floyd uh, i didn't have the knowledge of pink floyd i was r rather young uh, of course i went back and i bought the records that preceded uh, this masterpiece uh, recorded at Abbey Road Studios, as you all know the rest. And this has the posters and the uh, two postcards. Here's a great one I bought new because I was a big Chuck Berry fan and he hadn't really did anything of note uh, up until, you know, past this, the 60s. And this was 72, I believe. And this has a, um, a really good sound to it. It's a live recording, and I believe it's a studio recording. But the, the kicker here was My Dingling, which was a big pop hit. Uh, edited it down. My Dingling on here is 1152. But it's just one of the best sounding live records of Chuck that I have, uh, which I consider a modern one. Now, it's funny, the people who play on the side one, which is a studio uh, studio sessions, is Chuck Barry vocal and guitar, Derek Griffin's guitar, Ian McLagan, piano, and Kenny Jones on drums. So the great Kenny Jones on drums. Side two live, it, you have uh, Robbie, Mc, Robbie uh, McIntyre and Rick Gretsch, bass and drums, Nick Porter on bass, Owen McIntyre on guitar, Chuck on lead guitar and uh, vocals and and guitar. So uh, this is a great sounding record if you could pick up an original, which is the orange uh, chess. Really uh, nice. I've had this for 50 years in my collection. Moved numerous times. Kept out of harm's way. They were never in storage. They were always with me, always in an uh, environment that was uh, control never had in a damp basement always had them stored right always used proper equipment on them and these records i i guarantee these records will sound as fresh as they did when i bought them and they sound better now because my equipment is probably 30 times better than when i first had these here's another great one i believe i've had this for 50 years the date on here uh, I believe this is a 72 Cotillion, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, pictures at an exhibition. And with this, I went back. After this, I went back. I bought the, uh, a lot of the nice records and um, or the niche records, the nice records, the records that Keith Emerson did uh, with that band. And this is pictures at an exhibition. And there's the paintings. Just a great record. And in it, I have, I just noticed, the uh, obituary for keyboardist Keith Emerson uh, passed away when he was 71. So sometimes I put that in um, in the album if I, if I have the mind to do that. In this particular case, I did. I met Keith Emerson at a convention in New Jersey. I just talked to him. I didn't get an autograph or anything. I'm sorry, I didn't. Here's another great one I've had for 50 years. I've had a lot of records for 50 years. RCA, you Stardust. This was a uh, Ken Scott, I believe Ken Scott engineered it. And it says here on the back to be played at maximum volume. 
great record. I had to uh, throw in a David Bowie record, Black RCA. And I'm, this is a, Dyna, a Dynaflex. And these Dynaflex sound pretty good. I, I put them up against any 180-gram record for the most part. They sound good. They may not... Um, they may not have the bass that the uh, 180s do, but it depends on the it depends on the recording. But a great one, Ziggy Stardust. There's Bowie in the back, and of course, I've talked about this record numerous times. One of my favorite records, Deep Purple, Machine Head. This has the poster with lyrics on it, and uh, Gatefold, Original Inner. I probably play this record 20 times a year. I've been playing this record forever, for 50 years, 50 plus years. I believe this is 71 or 72. This is 72. It's just a perfect record. Every song is a greatest hits to me. Lazy, Smoke on the Water, Space Trucking, Highway Star, Maybe I'm a Leo. Um, just, just fantastic. Uh, if you don't have it, I'm sure it's been uh, reissued on certain occasions. And, uh, but if you could find a, an OG from Warner, pick that up. It's one of my all-time favorites as well. I've talked about this numerous times. This record's a perfect record as well. Uh, 1973, 1974 around came out. I believe this is the uh, second cover. I have the other cover, which has a uh, girl in blue with uh, kind of scantily clad if i may but this is the same record and there you have it on tracks tracks domestic mca but this record just sounds great and i also consider this a perfect record and that's 10 and this one i know i didn't pick it up when it was when it debuted um as i as i said some records i bought you know when i was started buying records in the 70s and uh, this one, of course, I just had to throw doors in there. Strange days. People are strange. Love Me Two Times is on here. Just a great cover. And um, has the inner, the lyric inner right there. I've had this for 50 years, a red Electra, and I would guarantee when I play this record, it's it's excellent. It's better than VG+. Plus. not saying it's near mint, but I'm sure close to near mint. Always take care of your records, clean them. Always take care of your stylus. Make sure the stylus isn't worn, because once you wear a record out or damage a record, there's no going back. I've seen numerous numerous questions on facebook on the uh vinyl community you know clubs and chapters on facebook or record collecting uh can i can i repair a scratch record uh this record is scratched how can i there's no going back the record can be cleaned if it's dirty and most of these records 50 years old if you find these in the wild and not in a record store they were probably never cleaned on a decent machine uh, which I mean a vacuum machine or some type of machine that's going to actually uh, lift the dirt out. Uh, ultrasonic is, is, what we, is what we've come to know as the summit of those today. I don't have an ultrasonic. I have a VPI vacuum cleaner, which is fine for me. And um, I try to take care of my records that way. But that's it. Those are uh, 11 records I've had for over 50 years. And this is part one. If you like this segment, if you have any questions, if you want to you know, let me know what percentage your records are that are over 50 years old. If you're if you're at that level of age, uh, not too many, not too many people, uh, I think that have VC channels. Are there's a lot of young folks out there. There's a lot of people my age and people older as well. So uh, thanks for dropping in. Uh, keep rocking. Keep on uh, digging that music and take care of your vinyl. It'll last you 50 years or more. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye.